Hello and welcome. This is Mark with Avid Care, and today we'd like to show you how to reach your Canvas dashboard and your Avid Digital XP Tech Check. When you log into your My Avid account, please click on the blue My eLearning button located here on the home page. Not to be confused with the eLearning menu choice that leads you to some other resources. If you do not have this blue My eLearning button on your homepage, please call Avid Care at 833-284-3227 and we'll be happy to assist you with this. Once you are logged in and you do see this blue My eLearning button, please click on it. It will open another tab in your web browser and will take you to your Canvas dashboard. Now your dashboard is made up of a left navigation pane the dashboard itself, and some other to-do lists on the right-hand side. Please note your course tiles will look different than this, and if you do not see any course tiles, that means that your view needs to be set to card view by clicking on these stacked ellipses and choosing card view. Once you have reached the dashboard and you see your Avid Digital XP Tech Check course tile, please click on that. That will take you into the course. And you'll see first off that there's the Chrome and Firefox logos. Those are the preferred browsers to use for the Avid Digital XP. If you run through the technology check and you find that you're having some issues, uh, we do have a virtual help desk that runs every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. You can RSVP here and then we'll be happy to assist you with your device. Now we have three steps to follow and this is to help you have an optimal experience during the event. Number one, click on the technology tab. It's already chosen for you so you can scroll down. You'll see that there's a technology checklist. This has some requirements for the actual uh, digital XP. Uh, the supported web browsers, the desktop operating system, uh, any unacceptable devices, uh, network requirements, um, and a web filter whitelist, websites that you need to be able to reach, and some software recommendations and additional recommendations. Uh, for example, when we say web filter whitelist, this just indicates you need to be able to reach this website, not necessarily log into it. So if we're to click on this Vimeo, it's going to open up another tab, and the fact that you're able to get to Vimeo's website is all that you need to know. You do not need to create an account at any of these websites. Everything will be handled by our staff developers inside the course the day of the event. Well, Indiana Jones, who is the user of this My Avid account, has registered for the Avid Elementary 3 through 6 course. So you'll want to click on the, your specific community of practice, and you'll see the specific uh, tools and resources that will be used during that course. Once you click on here, you'll see that you know, there's, the, again, the web browsers that are supported, desktop operating systems, unacceptable devices. It's very important to have the latest version of Chrome as of this recording. That is uh, version 8.3.0. Uh, fully patched machines and other things like that really help you have a better experience the day of the event. Down here at the bottom, these are the web apps that are going to be used during the 3 through 6 uh, community of practice or COP as we call it and all you need to do similar to what we did before is click on each one of these and just make sure that you can actually reach that site now when you click on these to get back to that checklist you need, just need to click the back on your web browser and come back here click on the next one and continue through all these until you've done that if you find you cannot reach one of these and you're getting an error message that usually indicates that your school or district has restricted access to a certain website and you'll need to contact them to have them uh, open that up on the firewall or make sure that it is what's called a white listed domain. Once you're done with this part of the checklist, you can close this and go back to here and you'll want to scroll all the way back up and come here to the Conferences tab. Now in our conferences, we use uh, 
big blue button as our video platform. Uh, but the conferences is where you'll live on the day of the event. You'll be at, uh, joining conferences that are in the morning, it's in the afternoon, both synchronous and asynchronous, and those will be associated with your COP or community of practice. To test to make sure that your device is adequate for a big blue button, we request that you click on this link here. This will actually open up another window and take you to Big Blue Button's test site. All you need to do here is enter your name, click on join, and once you click on join, it's going to ask you to do a couple of things to test your audio. One of the things it's going to ask you is how you would like to join audio. During all of our conference uh, and conferences, we want you to select microphone because we want you to be able to participate. If you were to select listen only, you would not be able to um, participate uh, using your microphone. Click microphone and once you do that it's going to load an echo test. When that echo test loads you just need to speak a few things and hear it back in your own ears and then that way you know it's okay. When you click on this your web browser may give you this message that you have to allow access to your microphone in your web browser. This will happen in Chrome or Firefox and all you have to do is click allow. Alternatively, you can click on the lock, and I'm using Firefox right now. You can click on the lock and choose permissions. This is going to look similar to whatever you're using in Chrome. That You click on the lock and it will say settings. You click on the permissions and it will take you to either make sure that you can allow the microphone to be used all the time, and then you'll be able to ready to go. In this particular case, all you really need to do is click allow. It's connecting to the echo test. This may take a, take few, a seconds. few seconds. Once it Once loads, it loads up, up, you'll hear, hear the, echo. the echo. And then and when then you, do, you that, do that, you can, you can click, click, yes. click yes. You are currently the only person in this conference. So you notice up here you have joined the audio conference. You are joined in your own session. On the left here, you can see that your name is located here. And once you're in the conference and you're in your your own sessions, you will see the other participants listed here. If you haven't used Big Blue Button before, you can left click on your name. And if you go to set status, you'll see that there's a number of things you can do by doing that. Once you're done doing this test, you can click these three buttons, uh, these three ellipses up here at the right, rather, and choose log out. You can then close this window and come back to this setting. So in this setting, we are continuing with our conferences and it does lead you through what we just did. You'll see we did all of these things. You come down here and it gives you all of these indications so you can refresh your recollection on those. Once you've completed all this testing, all you have to do is close the room like we did before. And then now you want to come down here to the very bottom and click on e-learning navigation. This is how to navigate the course in the e-learning uh, itself here in Canvas. You'll notice when you first get in here, you have your account uh, with your name. It may or may not have your picture in there already, but then you've got dashboard, courses, calendar, etc., and all those other things. Once you scroll down, if you click on dashboard, you'll view the dashboard we've seen before. If you click on courses, you'll see all the courses that you have in there, some of which may not be actually shown on your dashboard and you may have already completed them. You can view help. Canvas has a very extensive help system. And uh, if you need more information, there's a link down here to get global navigation as a student. Remember, you are a student in our event and do not be swayed by that. You will be acting as a student. Once you've completed all these, you can actually close this and go back to your dashboard. I did want to show you one more thing, is that on your dashboard, on the day uh, the, before the event, on day zero at about eight in the morning, you'll see your course tile appear. When you click on your course tile, one of the things you'll see on the day of the event is the ability to get into 
the opening session. There'll be a big blue box here with a join now, and you'll be able to see that. Um, conferences. This conference is already passed, so you'll notice that all of the conferences have concluded. On the day of the event, you'll see the new conferences appearing up here, and you'll click on each one as you're ready to join it. You'll have morning and afternoon sessions. Once the conferences are concluded, they will appear in the concluded conferences. All of them are recorded, and at some point, usually the next day, they'll appear down here. You can actually replay them and uh, you'll be able to experience those once again. Modules, you'll come in here and you'll see the different modules associated. Your staff developers will lead you through this, and um, et cetera. There's other things here that you'll be using during the event. So that's the, uh, that's the overview of that. And if you ever have any questions, please do feel free to call Avid Care. Our number is 833-284-3227, and that spells 833-AVID-CARE. We're glad that you were able to join us today and I hope you have a great event.